Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode, we are going to take a look at a simple view and URL mapping. So we're going to make a very, very, very basic index page, home page, welcome page, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to map it to a URL so that it will actually work. Now the first thing that we want to do, and this is optional, but it's something that I always do with my projects, is I like to create a separate URLs file for each app so that the app itself is in charge of the URLs and not the uh, project. So to do this, you're just going to want to copy and paste the URLs file from the project into the app. And once you do that, you just want to remove this definition about admin, and then you can remove the import for admin. So all I did again was copied this URLs file and pasted it in the specific app, and then I removed that one line that talked about admin site because we don't want to do that more than once. Once you do that, you want to go into the URLs for the project and tell it to look at the URLs in the app. So to do that, you just write URL and then you write the regular expression string with just a caret and then you want to write include pdbapp.urls and you're going to want to import include. Uh, to pull this up, you just hold option and hit enter. Um, and that will basically bring this up and you can say import and that will import um, include from the same place where it imported URL. I'm not going to really explain this because it doesn't really make a difference but essentially we're saying that if you try to go to you know a basic URL it's going to delegate that to this URL's file but if you try to go to an admin URL it's going to delegate it to the admin site. Again don't really worry about that. What we're going to focus on are the views.py and urls.py that exist in our app. And in fact, I'm going to collapse um, the project because we're not going to be dealing with that for a little while. Now, here is the view. And like I said, each view is really just going to be a function. I'm going to clear everything out of here because I don't really want that import for render because I usually tend to do it a different way. Let's go ahead and write a view. It's just a function. We want to give it a good name, so I'm going to call it index because this is for our home page. And it takes one parameter, which is request. And request basically just contains information about the particular request. Uh, we're going to use that at various times, but it can tell you information like the current user, if the user is logged in, the get and post data, and various other things like that. So Essentially, again, the view is just a function. It takes the request data as a parameter and it returns an HTTP response, which is just a class that Django provides that contains some HTML. So we want to go ahead and say return HTTP response. And we're going to import this again, option enter to do an import. And we want to import Django.http dot HTTP response. So you'll notice that it gives us that import there. There are various different types of HTTP responses. So for example, there's HTTP response redirect, if you want to redirect the person to another page. Uh, but we're just going to use the basic one. So the constructor for this HTTP response class will take some HTML. So for example, let's give it an H1, and we're going to say programming database. And we want to end H1. So this is some very, very, very basic HTML right there. And that's basically it. We don't actually care about the request data because again, this is such a simple page, um, but we just want to return a response that contains this HTML. Now we need to create a URL mapping so that if they try to go to the home page, it will take them to this, um, this uh, view. So if we go over to URLs, we want to create an entry in this URL patterns list. So we call the URL function. The first step is the regular expression. We're just going to write caret dollar sign, which means caret is start, dollar sign is end. So essentially, if they type nothing at all, just example.com, not slash whatever, just example.com. We want to map it to views.index. And we want to import views. So we want to import pdbapp.views. And finally, we want to give it the keyword arg name. So we'll say name equals index. So essentially, again, what this does 
is the regular expression is just empty, so you don't put anything, you just go to example.com. It's going to map to the index view, and we're calling it index. So if I want to refer to this particular URL pattern, I can use the name index. We'll use that later on. But essentially what happens is, if we want to look at this again, um, when a request is made, it goes to the URLs of the project. And since this is just a standard URL that we're looking for and not an admin URL, it's going to delegate this to the URLs for our project, for our app, rather. And in that case, it will say, okay, you're looking for the URL of the home page. So it's going to take you to the view called index, the view, the index function. And this will generate an HTTP response that says programming database. And that is the data that will then be sent back to the user. So if we want to run this, we'll go ahead and hit run. And if we pull up the page, you'll see that it says programming database uh, as an H1, as a header one. So that is the very, very, very simple um, you know, first start. We created a, a uh, view that takes, uh, that returns some HTML data, and we created a URL mapping that basically says, oh, you're trying to access the home page. Well, you should use the index view. The index view generates the HTML, and it gets sent back to the browser. Very simple. Now, of course, we don't want to fill our views.py with hundreds of lines of HTML, and of course, we don't want to use string interpolation because that would be really, really ugly. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to move this into a template so that we can actually define this as a separate HTML file and then load that data and return it as an HTTP response. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and continue on to the next video for more Django. Bye for now.